Hey guys, welcome back to some more reviews, and this is actually a review I'm really excited for, um, because I just got back from the movie theaters, and I just, uh, I just saw Star Wars The Force Awakens, um, which was released in 2015, and I gotta say guys, first of all, this is my first Star Wars movie ever seen in the movie theaters, um, I have not seen, you know, you know, Revenge of the Sith or Attack of the Clones, I didn't see those movies in theaters, um, but I, this is my first movie, or the first Star Wars movie I've ever seen in theaters. And I gotta be honest with you guys. Um, this is probably the best movie of 2015. Um, I know that I mentioned that Jurassic World was one of them and, you know, No Escape was, and those are great movies, but this movie is just, if you're a Star Wars fan, um, I, in my opinion, I would say this is, you know, a perfect sequel. Um, at least in my eyes, in my opinion, it's a perfect sequel. Now, I know this is not everybody's favorite movie. Um, I know that, you know, there are people that don't like the movie. Um, I know that, uh, Ram Raffleck doesn't like the movie, which is, it's, it's fine, it's his opinion. And I know that OCP Communications, he doesn't like the movie. Um, which, once again, it's fine, it's their opinions, it's totally cool. Um, but, you know, it, it's not the best sequel to everybody, uh, it's uh, a lot more, it's got a lot more computer graph, you know, just CGI in it. And I will admit this, though. They do have a lot of practical effects. And I was surprised by that. I was really surprised by that. And, you know, it just, and like I said, once again, this is just my opinion. And also, before I continue with the review, I want to mention spoilers. Spoiler alert from here on. Because I know this is like a newer film. Um, it came out December 18th. And, you know, I do understand it is a newer film and not everybody's seen it yet. Um, but if you have not seen Star Wars The Force Awakens, I will be spoiling this movie. I will be, you know, revealing stuff that if you haven't seen the movie yet, then it will be spoilers. So, you know, spoiler alert from here on, I will be talking about some details about this movie that would be spoiling it so spoiler alert from here on spoiler alert and so yeah um i have i'm a big fan of star wars i grew up with the first three movies i grew up with the uh with star wars uh empire strikes back and return of the jedi um unfortunately though i grew up with the special edition as you guys know, the special edition is the edited version of basically the original trilogy. Um, basically edited and, and went back. And yes, I will say this though, improved picture and sound. But added scenes and added creatures, CGI. You know, I think there was even one cut where they added a different voiceover for, Bo for Boba Fett. And then I guess there was one DVD where... You know, it may not be this exact special feat, special edition, but I do know that there was one movie where when Luke falls off of the, uh, you know, the rafter, like, you know, basically like, he falls off this, uh, platform and as he's falling, they insert a scream that sounds terrible. Um, basically the Star Wars special edition is the edited version and just added more CGI and extra scenes. And, um, I, I will say this though, in the special edition, they, they enhanced that funny scene, which was a blooper in the original movie, where when the door opens, it doesn't open all the way, and a stormtrooper hits his head in the freaking door. So I will say that was a fun little edit where they actually edited in the sound going like, like an impact sound whenever his head hits the, uh, door. So that was a fun little add into the movie. Um, but as, I've heard that the original versions of Star Wars, the original trilogy, they're better than the special edition. So, I would say that I grew up with the first three movies, but I grew up with the special editions. So, I need to see the original movies. Like, I really want to see the original, um, you know, versions of the movies, because I heard they're really good. Um, but, I grew up with Star Wars, the original trilogy. I didn't grow up with the uh, prequels. Um, I had the first prequel, Phantom Menace. But I have not seen it in probably 10 years. So I really can't remember it that good. Um, it's been a long, long time since I've seen it. And um, I don't own the prequels, though. I didn't grow up with those movies. 
I've heard, you know, bad things about the prequels. Um, but, you know, me being a Star Wars fan, maybe they'd be good. But, you know, I've heard that some of them are not that great. But, you know, I haven't seen them yet. But, Star Wars The Force Awakens, like I said, it's the best movie, in my opinion, 2015. Gets an 8.5 on IMDb, which deserves it. It totally deserves it. This movie, in my opinion, it deserves, you know, this movie beat Titanic in like two weeks. Two weeks of its release, it already beat Titanic in the box office. Those of you that don't know, Titanic was the highest grossing film, you know, probably of all time. At that, you know, until two weeks into this release, this movie broke that record in two weeks. That's how big Star Wars is. And I'm like, wow, two weeks and it already broke the record. And you know what? They're still making money. You gotta sell Blu-rays and DVDs. It's still in theaters. So, it's like, oh my gosh, that's crazy. And the movie is, it's not directed by George Lucas, but it's directed by J.J. Abrams, or Abrams, who was involved with uh, Star Trek Into Darkness, which I heard about, uh, Super 8, which, no, I'm not really a big fan of that movie. Star Trek, which I really, which I liked. Mission Impossible 3, once again, not really something. I mean, it wasn't terrible, but, you know, I didn't think it was spectacular. But this is probably, so far, his best movie. And I know that he's going to work on some newer movies. Um, I believe so. Like, not, I don't think in the directing field, but more of like a writer and producer type of field. But I do know that George Lucas was involved in the movie, and I thought he did a great job directing the movie, J.J. Abrams. I thought he did a good job, and it's got everything going for it. I mean, you've got awesome acting, great characters. They bring back characters from the original Star Wars, like Han Solo, Chewbacca, Princess Leia, Luke Skywalker, um, R2-D2, C-3PO. And you know what I like about this movie? This movie did something that I've been wondering if a movie would ever do this before, like, you know, after. Because a lot of movies that are rebooted from an original series, they bring back the original characters, the original cast, and they do nothing with them. They just sort of bring them in for one scene, or maybe two scenes, and that's it. No, when they bring back Han Solo, they bring back Chewbacca, you know, they bring back Princess Leia, they actually made these characters do something. They were involved with the story. They weren't just there one minute and then gone the next. Never seen again. No, they were involved in the movie. And a lot of times when films are rebooted, you know, they get these cast members in there from the original movie and they don't really do anything or they're barely in the movie. So that was cool. They actually had the original cast involved with the film. And everybody did a great job. I mean, you know, Harrison Ford did a great job as Han Solo. Um, Mark Hamill a little bit in the movie. Um, Carrie Fisher did a great job as Princess Leia. And then you got your new characters, which, once again, with most reboots, when you have a brand new cast coming into the movie, um, along with the original cast, most people just care about the original cast. Well, here the characters are great. You know, you got a character named Finn, who was a stormtrooper who sort of turns against, um, not the Empire, I forgot what it was called, the First Order. And it's sort of similar to the Empire a little bit, a little bit similar to the Empire. And you find that he was a stormtrooper, and he doesn't want to be a stormtrooper anymore. So he becomes a, uh, basically um, basically a good guy, you know, not a stormtrooper, but basically part of the Resistance. And you got um, Ray, good kicker, you find out, which... I'm not sure if this is 100% true, but she has the Force. She can fight with the lightsaber, so she, I think she's Luke Skywalker's daughter. Um, so you got Ray played by Daisy Ridley, or Daisy Ridley. Um, good character, good acting. Um, you got Poe played by Oscar Isaac, who's been in a couple movies. Um, did a good job. Did a decent job. Um, he's been an ex-Machina, 
drive and inside Lion Davis and he was in this movie but the cast is good the acting is great the atmosphere is amazing beautiful set you know just beautiful designs for the you know atmosphere and the music is they brought back the original score it's amazing it, it, it's really amazing um the, the the lightsaber fight scenes you know at the end of the movie and towards the middle of the movie those are great great cgi the cgi felt like it was added in the cgi felt like it was needed um not just overused and to the point where like okay why is the cgi no they use a lot of practical effects and when CGI was in there, it didn't bother me. It was good CGI. They combined practical with CGI. Okay, I like it when films do that because at least you have, you know, some practical effects. And, not, and, not, and even in this movie, they're not just some practical effects. There's a lot of practical effects and a lot of puppeteering. Um, just, you know, a lot of practical effects and stuff like that and puppeteering and practical stuff in this movie. So the CGI, when it was on the screen, it really didn't bother me because it looked good for one, not bad CGI, and um, it just felt like it was kind of, when there was CGI there, it wasn't pointless. It was needed. So, you know, that didn't bother me, and just, it's got everything going for it. Great story, characters that are awesome, um, atmosphere that's amazing, amazing score. Altogether, an amazing movie, in my opinion. In my opinion, but an altogether just an amazing movie, an amazing sequel. Definitely up there with Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi and the original Star Wars. Definitely, in my opinion, up there with those movies. Um, and this is when we get to the spoiler stuff. I'm talking about the story. Basically, the story is like I said, you got this um, guy named Finn. He uh. Basically, doesn't want to be a uh, stormtrooper anymore. So he helps. He helps uh, Poe escape, and then their spaceship crashes. Crashes, and then basically um, Poe knows this missing part of this map to find Luke Skywalker because he, he finds Luke Skywalker trained um, Leia and Leia and Han Solo's son. Um, you find out that, uh, Kylo Ren, uh, yeah, Kylo Ren, you find out that he was part of Luke Skywalker's Jedi training, you know, unit, where basically Luke Skywalker was training these people how to become Jedi, and you find out that he turned on these people and killed people, and Luke Skywalker is the only Jedi that's left, and, um, <clears throat> you got, basically, Kilo, uh, Kilo Ken, Kilo Ren, and, uh, what was it called again? Not the Empire. I keep forgetting what it's called. The First Order. They're trying to find this piece to this map, and you found that, um, you found that Kilo Ren is, uh, you know, kind of afraid that he's not going to be as good as Darth Vader, and while you got them chasing after the, the puzzle, or the, not the puzzle, but the, uh, piece of the map, you got uh, Han Solo helping um, Finn and Rey trying to get this map to the uh, the, uh, the Resistance, and then they get to the Resistance and they pretty much fight back against the first the First Order. And you have the end of the movie, which is action packed, and you know even the middle of the movie just action packed, and there's a whole scene where it's like action, you know. Where you got um, you got Ray fighting um, Kilo Ren, you got Finn fighting all these stormtroopers. And there's explosions everywhere, and then you got the end of the movie where they ba basically you get um, the Resistance going up against the uh, the First Order, and of course the plant of the First Order's base is on gets ex exploded, and you got that fight at the end of the movie, which is probably my favorite scene, where you know they're in the woods, it's snowing. You got Kilo Ren. He fights Finn, cuts him a little bit. Um, he doesn't die, but he's wounded. And then you got um, 
Ray fight him. She has the force. She's fighting. Um, Kilo Ren slices his face, and the freaking ground breaks. Epic ending, in my opinion, just epic. And um, you got a lot of characters to come back. You got C three PO coming back. Um, you know R two D two. Um, just really, really cool. You know, bring backs to the series. And this movie is a great, you know, reboot. It's it's just phenomenal. It's amazing. If you haven't seen it yet, I recommend you watch it. It's really good. And then you got um basically you got Ray finding Luke Skywalker in the movie. And then you got the idea that maybe Ray is gonna get trained by Luke Skywalker. And then the end of, and then the movie ends. So Star Wars The Force Awakens, in my opinion, the best movie of 2015. Really good. Definitely check it out if you haven't seen it yet. And I'm getting this movie out. I'm getting this movie on Blu-ray when it comes out. Um, and yeah, I mean, it's really good. So guys, thanks for watching my review on Star Wars or Force Awakens. And I'll see you guys on the next review. Bye guys.